my talk. Here we go. Uh. Ah, he said he living life as a gringo. Where you question, where you fit, and every time you mingle, they say you do this with not enough that. My rapping is really bad. <laughs> this life as a gringo. Yes, hello and welcome to another episode of Life as a Gringo. I am Dramos, of course, and it is Thursday, so it means it's time for our Thursday Trends episode. I am flying on today's show because, as I've been mentioning, I don't feel like I have to explain it anymore, but for those, you know, who are are curious why I haven't had as many guests on Thursday Trends as of late, we've had a lot of guests on the uh, Tuesday episode, so I just like to kind of be a little greedy, you know? And and get these bars in um, solo when I get the chance to, right? So that is what's happening today. We're flying solo. Also, just a heads up. We're gonna, let's uh, let's let's do some housekeeping here. Some life is a gringo housekeeping uh, before we get into today's show and, and what we're talking about today. Um, obviously Thursday. Yeah, we got to that. Uh, next week I'm gonna be traveling, so there will be no podcast. I was. Um, I was going back and forth on whether or not I would do it while I was traveling. I'm going to Puerto Rico next week to just uh, visit some family, shoot some content, meet up with some people. Just get away, basically. I need to get away for a little bit. And, yeah, so no podcast next week because I would just probably end up having to, like, rush it, half-ass it in some sort of way. It wouldn't sound good. I'd rather just not do that to y'all. So no podcast next week. Uh, we'll be back the following week, of course. What else we got going on? Also, in the world of Just Be – my like wellness lifestyle brand community that we are building like-minded individuals coming together to change our lives we are in a very scary way getting very close to the launch of the new iteration of the just be social club now i've you know sort of mentioned it on here before i apologize if i sound like a broken record but we are launching on april 30th which is a tuesday and in previous sessions, we've done two different groups before, and it's more just like a mastermind group, which has been absolutely amazing. We would meet up once a month via Zoom, and I talk about the four pillars of conscious living, which is kind of my my philosophy, and um, in general, just bouncing ideas off one another about life and all that we're going through, and, and how can we you know become better at the end of the day. And then we would also have like these expert calls where I would interview people who are you know doing their thing in their respective fields and you would be able to pick their brain on, on how they got there and all those different things. So that has been amazing. We've seen some incredible results. I mean, people have launched their own podcast. They have um, started their businesses. You know, They have just sort of found some inner peace or found community. It's been incredible to just see everybody's personal growth. Everybody, I feel like, got something out of it. And that has been absolutely amazing to watch. And you know, my partner and I, Brenda, we, we were always just like, man, how do we grow it though? How do we touch more people's lives? How do we help more people who look like you and I, who came up in, in a similar background or, or those who are just looking for other like-minded individuals, you know, who are growth oriented. And the new iteration of the Just Be Social Club, it's not going to be like a closed off group, how these other ones were. It's really going to be a bit more open. It's gonna be ongoing. It is going to um, include like the the live talks, how we had done, but it's also going to allow you to genuinely be in community with other people 24 hours a day. We're going to do it through Patreon. And, you know, there's going to be, um, you know, pre-recorded modules. You can go back to all the previous Just Be Social Club recordings. We'll do a live stream like we had been doing, you know, where you can talk to me in real time. We'll do um, questions, you know, via, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have different prompts or, or office hours where you can ask us questions. We'll have, um, you know, some custom podcasts we're talking about like exclusively just for just be social club members and again it's also you're going to be able to interact with other people who are from your background or have similar interests my my hope with this is to create like a hub for for those of us in our community and communities of color to be able to like have a one-stop shop to connect with people who do amazing work right if you are somebody who is i'm going to use creative field just because obviously that's what i i deal in but you're like oh i want to start a podcast i need a logo and cover art the beauty of like the Just Be Social Club would be we're going to have a community hub where you can put that out there and and then we'll have people who are graphic designers, you know, and be like, oh, I actually do that for a living. I can help you out. Now you're supporting one another who are, are within the community. You're easily connecting with people who, um, you know, are skilled at the things that you want to do or getting feedback in real time. Hey, I'm working on this. What do you guys think? And being able to have that real time genuine community aspect right of people who want to see you succeed who understand you know where you come from and want nothing but the best for you so that's what we're building with it again it launches april 30th if you want to be added to um 
the the sort of waiting list. We're going to email a bunch of people when the, the link goes live so that you can join it. Um, you can email uh, Brenda, Brenda at mindofayounglord.com. I'll put it in the show notes. Or just send me a DM on Instagram at DJ Dramos. We're going to keep it kind of old school and family oriented uh, here. We just reach out to us directly and I'll add you to the list once we launch it. But I really have some grandiose ideas for this for this to just be like a lifetime thing where we're all just in community, right? For me, I'm building what I always wanted to see. And I'm not, I don't want to go on too long of a, a spiel here, but for me, I felt very lonely in my journey coming up, you know, where I didn't have a lot of people who saw life the way that I did or understood me. And, you know, I struggled a lot as a result, you know, in, in being able to, um, have others to bounce ideas off of or to just feel a little bit less alone. And I'm trying to create this hub where we no longer have to feel like that. Even if we live in, you know, bumblefuck, whatever, and there's nobody that looks like us or understands us, at least you can go on this, you know, Patreon and and in this community and you feel seen and feel heard and, and feel like you're a part of something, right? And connect with other people um, so that you no longer have to be going about all this stuff alone. And that's sort of the idea with this and that's what we're trying to build out with with the new just be social club so april 30th that launches again reach out in some sort of way if you want to be put on the the waiting list so we can send you an email when it launches and that's it oh merch if you're watching the video of this i just we dropped some merch that i'm really proud of i have the b hat on right now um and we have the bu sweatshirts that are beautifully embroidered just amazing i'm really excited about how it all turned out i think i've been wearing them out a lot in the streets and People have been like connecting with it, especially like the BU sweater. I just see um, how it like makes people kind of stop in place and, and think for a second. Or I was at a coffee shop the other day and um, I was about to sit down. And this woman was just like staring at me. And then she was like, I'm so sorry. I just saw your hat. And, um, you know, that it just saying B was so timely and poignant for me. Like it, it, it was just a reminder. So thank you. So, yeah, I don't know. Just just cool stuff's happening, man. Just be that NYC if you want to pick some stuff up or check it out. Now, with that said, let's get to the episode, man. Thursday trends. We are talking about a lot of positive stuff today. I actually only really want to talk about positive stuff. There's only one story that I want to get into that it's not even super negative, but I feel like the news cycle has been so negative. We deserve some positivity. Um, but there's one story that is a little, you know, um, I don't want to say controversial. It's just, you know, it's not necessarily a positive one. So we'll talk about a brewery that tried to honor Selena with a limited release and her family uh, actually sent them a cease and desist. So we'll touch on that. And then it's all positivity from there. You had, um, man, Coachella happening this last weekend. And actually, I think this one as well. It's a two-weekend thing. So we'll talk about all the Latin representation that was there. You had the WNBA draft and you actually had Latinas who were a part of that draft as well. We'll talk about that and honor them. And then Farm Cella Festival is a place to honor and celebrate farm workers, which is just amazing stuff. Um, so we're going to get into all that. We're just going to keep it really positive, really light for the most part today. We'll do our one little story that, you know, has a little bit of a, uh, you know, Maybe not such a happy ending for everybody involved. All right, so we'll do that in a segment we call for the people in the back. Say a lot for the people in the back. All right, so let's uh, talk about this story. We are me is the source, of course. Link in show notes. You want to read the full thing, but we actually sadly just had the anniversary of, of Selena's death at the end of, of March. It's crazy, almost 30 years uh, later. And and people are are rightfully honoring this woman, but it's crazy that it, it happened almost 30 years ago um, that she was sadly just, just murdered. Um, and people still do a lot of different things, obviously, when... Um, in just general, I think Selena is one of those just iconic cultural figures that I think is is larger than life at this point, you know, and means so much to people who maybe didn't even grow up when she was even alive, you know. Um, I feel like she's kind of like Elvis status for us, you know, like Elvis is just like this legendary figure. Um, and, and I think Selena is is that for, for us Latinos. So you had this uh, Highland Park uh, based Chicago, uh, Ch Chicano, sorry, Chicano lifestyle boutique. This is uh, Highland Park, California. The boutique is called Mi Vida. And they had an idea to celebrate the life of, of Selena. They actually teamed up with a POC owned craft brewery called Brujeria for a limited beer release uh, called Tomo La Flor, which is just beautiful. 
Um, and according to, to them, um, the idea was uh, conceived to like pair pizza and beer together, honoring Selena's favorite food, which is pizza. And what they say is actually that um, Mi Vida, which is the, the lifestyle boutique, um, that they actually honor and celebrate Selena's birthday at their shop every year. And the shop is in California. But this year they wanted to go a bit bigger. And, and obviously that's why they paired up with the, the brewing company to come up with a, a beer. And apparently the the um the family of Selena, the Quintanilla family, wasn't happy about this, right? So the the brands actually made a thousand cans of the pale ale, quickly sold out, and right when they were thinking about making more, they actually received a letter from the family of, of Selena and it was a cease and desist, uh, basically asking them to stop what they were doing, you know, or or else basically. And the article also goes on to say that this is not the first time that the family has um, reached out to people and threatened legal action against them using any sort of potential likeness of hers. There was also a, a legal fight with the late husband of hers um, over profits from her career. I mean, just a lot of different things. And I, I think it's an interesting conversation. Now, the, the brands talk about how they never actually say Selena's name out loud or put her name on the the cans right so they're saying that they don't feel like they crossed into any sort of copyright issue they just uh called it tomo la flor right and there is like a they just called it tomo la flor and and there is like a artist like a, a cartoon drawing that looks like selena wearing a necklace that says tomo la, uh, tomo la flor right and I think people are, are going back and forth on you know is does the family you know they justified here uh, and they're, they're basically, you know, saying that the way that the family has set it up, it's as if no one can profit from Selena's legacy, but her father essentially. Right. And I think this is an interesting topic of, of, of conversation at the end of the day. I think, Hey, this is beautiful that people are honoring an icon like this, um, years, years later. And, I guess there's a controversy or topical conversation happening of like, should the family just chill the fuck out a little bit? I think it's beautiful that it is communities of color coming together. Like you have two brands that are uh, POC owned and collaborating and doing beautiful things like this, right? Um, first and foremost, that's just awesome. Shout out to the, the Brujeria Craft, uh, the Craft Brewery Company. Um, I want to check that out next time I am in, in Puerto Rico and the uh, Chicano Lifestyle Boutique Mi Vida. Next time I'm in Puerto Rico, jeez. I'm, I'm already in Puerto Rico mentally right now, guys. Uh, California. Next time I'm in California, in the L.A. area, I want to go check that out. Anyway, I just think there's – it's easy to paint the family out to be the bad guy. It's like, oh, we're just trying to honor honor this, you know, um, the life of Selena. And, and rightfully so, as fans, I, I get it. I think there's probably just – I don't. I mean, I don't, I don't want to make it like it's all about money. I think there's probably also a lot of trauma for that family around the idea of their daughter and even us as fans if we're trying to honor her you know it it has to feel a bit i don't know what the the proper wording would be it, it has to feel a bit invasive i think that people are are sort of running with her legacy and and doing with it as they see fit and again, this is a positive one. They're celebrating her. But I guess I guess what I'm getting at is for them, because I feel like the article, to a degree, and you can tell me if I'm wrong here, I feel like the tone of it seemed like it painted the 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 family out to be a little bit, you know, money hungry and and you know, overly protective. But I think we have to look at it from the perspective of it's probably one of the few things that they get to control when it comes to their daughter at the end of the day, or her sister, you know. Sadly, they had no control over the way that her life ended. And I'm sure that haunts them till this day, right? The idea that she's gone, there's nothing they could do about it. There was no preparation. There was nothing they could do to protect her, right? So I think when they see things like this, and obviously I'm not in their head and nor am I uh, a therapist or something like that. But I think we sort of have to have a bit of empathy where it's, you know, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. It's not just about money that it's also about like, man, we had no control over the way this life has sort of turned out with 
our beloved, you know, daughter. And now as a result, like the trauma response is I need to be in as much control as possible when it comes to um, anything dealing with her, right? Like that, this is the only thing that I have now. I don't have my daughter anymore. I just basically have her likeness and her legacy. And, you know, um, I think that that is, man, that's just heartbreaking at the end of the day. I, I hear that and I know people would be like, what, what the fuck? You know, these, they, were, they just ruined a cool thing. But I also just see it as, man, this is like a trauma response of people who are still in a lot of pain from losing their loved one and, you know, the life that, that she was robbed of. You know what I mean? That That's just an incredibly sad thing to, like, visualize in my head. So I, I empathize with them. Um, outside of that, though, I just think I love seeing stuff like this, like brands coming together like that. Like I would love I would love to actually do some collaborations, you know. I'm like, uh, I'm just be obsessed right now. Like, I have so much in my heart for the brand, and I feel like I keep talking about it. But I'm just so excited about it. I want to, I want to just like, I really want this to be a big thing, and not big in terms of like I'm trying to be famous. I mean, big in terms of impact and connection. So like, I see stuff like this, and like, you know, um, my brain just starts going. By the way, like I'm I. I love to like, I'll watch YouTube videos. I'll just put on random shit just to like trigger a creative, like, you know, a bolt of energy inside of me. And that's what's happening right now as we're live recording this. I love this idea of collaboration and coming together and doing cool shit like this. I think it's just amazing. I would love to do that. Maybe has a brand or whatever you're working on. Maybe we could collaborate in some sort of way with just be, if it makes sense. I'm open to those ideas. I just, I love this type of stuff. I think that's more of the story that I look at from here. I'm like, man, like, look at this in a, in a small way. You have this boutique lifestyle company who's, um, you know, celebrates Chicano culture. You have this POC owned brewery and they're coming together to create cool products like this. I just, I don't know, that type of stuff just fires me the fuck up. And I think it just like, that's, that's the power we have, right? The internet connection. We literally could be like DMing people to create cool shit like this and bring it into the world. You know what I mean? Like we don't have to be boots on the ground anymore. And that's like, what I want to do would just be where it's like, oh, we have this hub of beautiful, amazing, growth-minded people who are all doing different things that are cool as fuck. And you might be able to find your next collaborator, your next business partner, right? Whatever it might be, your next inspir- a person of inspiration. Like, that that's what I'm trying to build. Like, my business partner, Brenda, and I, we, she was a listener of this podcast, and we've come together virtually. We've never actually met in person, but we've created so much together in the last, like, year and a half. And that's what I want other people to be able to have via Just Be, where it's like, oh, I'm, like, you know, interacting with this person via the the, the community. I like the way they think or their ideas. I think we could possibly work together on something, and boom, now you have this beautiful, you know, uh, working relationship that wouldn't have existed prior to. And I think that that's what we're trying to create with it. Um, and I apologize if this is sounding like an ad. I'm, I'm just like really excited about what we're doing and really energized um, by it. It's just, uh, I don't know, it's a beautiful place to be right now mentally. Anyway, so that's the one, you know, story uh, that was a little bit, not negative, but just, you know, um, wasn't like a feel-good story. With that said, we're going to get into all feel-good stories for the rest of the show. And we'll do that in our Mi Gente segment. All right, you have heard of Coachella that happened this last weekend. It's happening again this upcoming weekend. But have you heard of Farmchella? Okay, now Farmchella Festival is a place to celebrate farm workers. Okay, and actually, what's amazing again, people just doing cool shit. You had a Latina who decided to celebrate the Coachella Valley um, differently. The Coachella Valley differently. I don't know why I said it like that. So th- a lot of the like, uh, I don't want to say like, this is not backlash, but topics of conversation. It's like you have all these people who who fled to Coachella Valley, the, the part of California, for this festival. But there are actually people who are out there in the desert working every day, farm workers, you know, who are helping keep the local economy alive, basically, right? And... This Latino wanted to honor those who helped put food on the table. So this is actually the second year you had Flor Martinez Zaragoza uh, who launched the Farm Chela Festival. And apparently it's an all-out celebration of the contributions of farm workers in the Coachella Valley. Now, it uh, is actually happening today. So unfortunately, um, if you didn't know about this prior, I don't think you could make it. 
but it's happening today. They're saying hundreds of people will enjoy entertainment, giveaways, live concerts, and uh, the farmers are actually the headliners of, of this festival. And I, again, it's just beautiful. Like This is the type of shit, like, we're going to get to a couple conversations sort of based around this today, but like, if you just, if you have an idea, just bring it to life. You know, like th- that, that's, that's, this is what life is all about. You have somebody here in, in this woman, Flor, who is like watching everybody flood in for Coachella and all this. And then has this idea like, you know, it would be cool if we celebrate the everyday workers here who obviously are primarily Latino, if not all. And we make a day where we thank them for all of the work, the backbreaking work that they put in day in and day out and let them know that they're seen. Right. Especially in today's climate where, you know, um, there's so much like anti-immigrant narrative happening, particularly when it comes to um, those of Latin descent. You see things like this and it brings you a bit of hope. Right. And I think if all of us were doing Little things like this to bring bits of hope and put it out there into the world. I think it would feel like a a, a lot less of a scary and hopeless place at the end of the day, right? And I, I empower and challenge everybody listening. Like, this is what doing your part looks like. And it doing your part doesn't necessarily mean like, you know, you doing backbreaking volunteering work. It could. That's beautiful. It's amazing. But also... It could be just creating what's in your heart and, and and creating something that's positive, right? That is fulfilling for you internally, but also, or even maybe some sort of monetary thing, but at the same time, it puts something positive into the world, right? And again, if everybody was doing something that they're passionate about, it's a trickle-down effect. You know, I think even beyond just like the fact that we all would have a place to feel seen and heard. I truly do believe that the biggest trickle down effect is us just being happier individuals going about our everyday lives. Like I know for me, I'm a much happier person today than I was five years ago. So as a result, my interactions with others are more positive. And I truly do believe it's a domino effect where I have a positive experience with another person then they feel good and they go home with their family and have a positive experience. And then that trickles down to everybody they interact with, right? And I think that is sort of the beauty of all of us sort of doing the ideas and creating the things that, you know, light the fire within us is the trickle down effect that inevitably happens, regardless of monetary thing, regardless of attendance, viewership, whatever it might be, regardless of like the tangible statistics of whether or not something was a quote unquote success. If it makes you feel good and puts you in a better mood, it's a success because that right there is intoxicating. That right there is something that can be passed down to the next person just by you interacting with somebody in your everyday life. If you're in a good place mentally, your interactions will be that much more positive. I think that's the the beauty of of chasing after all that you want and, and doing what you want. And putting out a positive sort of event like this one, I think, is more of that, which is really beautiful. Now, on to the actual festival that is Coachella. Let's talk about the iconic Latinx moments, and this is thanks to Hip Latina. So there were a, a few different Latin performers uh, doing this on, on, on a big level, and it's a beautiful thing to see. So it's, it's actually funny to me. Uh, I watched like clips that were popping up on, on TikTok throughout the weekend, and... It's uh, as much as I'm not like, you know, Mr. You have to speak Spanish to be Latino, obviously. Um, I, it also is like funny to me to see these artists on the Coachella stage just speaking Spanish, like even between songs, addressing the audience in Spanish. And it warms my heart. You know, the idea that you have this festival that is pop culture, essentially. And here are these Latin artists um, not only performing their music, but at the same time showing up authentically and being able to address the crowd in their native tongue and and they're having the support of said crowds. I think it's just amazing. So you actually had um, Puerto Rican rapper Young Miko, who I'm a big fan of. She made her Coachella debut. Uh, I saw TikTok videos of, of her. It's just amazing to sort of see her her growth over over the last like year or so. Uh, and obviously, as a Puerto Rican, I got I to gotta give a shout out to her. 
you also had Shakira joining uh, Bizarre Rap on stage and announcing that she is going to be going on her world tour. I mean, she's already a fucking legend um, and now is going to be, be back out on the road uh, going going around the globe touring, which is obviously incredible. I mean, uh, at her, her age, still looking phenomenal, still killing it on stage, um, living her dream out. It's an inspiration right there. You actually had Jay Balvin performing, and one of the big moments that was going viral was Will Smith joining him on stage performing Men in Black. Is it corny? A little bit. It's a little corny, but you know what? For the nostalgia for all of us out there, I, I enjoy it. Will Smith, they actually did like a a pretty – it wasn't even like Will Smith just showed up and just did it. He had the whole suit on. They had like an alien set up. They had like dancers in the suit, and then like he pretended to like erase people's memory. So it was like a well-thought-out, well-planned thing. You know, it tugs at our nostalgia, uh, even if it's a little bit corny. Uh, you actually had the Brazilian singer uh, – Lumia making their Coachella debut, um, including, including a in recorded introduction by none other than fucking Beyonce. So, we out here, man. Like Beyonce is is talking you is is your intro. You are officially out here. So big shout to Lumia for for that um, again, and I just love that support happening from from you know all of these different communities of colors just amazing you had um also Caliucci's uh making a surprise appearance performing with one of the headliners uh Tyler the Creator amazing amazing she got to walk onto the biggest stage of Coachella with one of the headliners and then you also had um Mexican Gorido uh singer uh Peso Pluma right uh out there and he brought on uh Becky G if I'm not mistaken onto stage um, he also did a tribute um, to to the Mexican singers who paved the way, including La Diva, uh, De La Banda, and Jenny Rivera. So you had I, – th- I love this too. I think – who did this? The other, I think Carol G did this a couple years ago, if I'm not mistaken, or last year. I love when the next generation makes it a point to stop for a second and share their moment with the previous generation who made it possible for them to even be there. Right. To say, hey, this isn't just for me, but this is a moment for our entire community. I love that. And that's like so much of what I speak to. This is the type of stuff that gets me energized to get out of bed in the morning. It's like we're all here together and everything we do, it truly means something because so many people have sacrificed so much just for us to have the opportunity to even do what we do. And to have the ability to say, hey, I know you never got the opportunity to step out onto a stage like Coachella and perform for the masses of pop culture, you know, on on arguably the biggest festival stage in the United States of America. But you are here with us, right? Like, I I recognize all that you did in order for me to to get to be here today and I, I i love that sort of celebration of of legacy like that i think it's just amazing uh and yeah just beautiful stuff and i also want to touch on one more thing i want to touch on also the the wnba draft because you actually had some latina players being drafted this happened this last week obviously you had caitlin clark who has been a big story um of the the 2024 i mean just in general we talked about the record numbers that happened with the um with the women's ncaa uh finals uh tournament that happened right and of course you had um caitlin clark being the the big name here but they also had a handful of latina college basketball players being chosen to live out their dreams as professional basketball players in the WNBA. so let's say you had uh camilla cardoso so she is a Brazilian basketball player drafted by the Chicago Sky at number three in the first round. Let's go. You also had uh, Celeste Taylor, who is Puerto Rican and Colombian. What a combination. Um, drafted by the Indiana Fever at number 15 in the second round. And you also had Esmeri Martinez, um, who is originally from the DR and was uh, selected by the New York Liberty at number 17 in the second round. I'm sure she's – what a perfect place. You are Dominican and you end up getting drafted into New York 
what a lucky situation. They're gonna love you over there. So have to of course give a, a big shout out. And also you had um Leilani Corres, right? And the Indiana Fever uh, drafted her at number twenty seven in the third round of the draft. Um, and I don't know, did it say where she is from? No, it didn't say where she's from. But um, Corres, that's Latin. It sounds Latin. Beautiful stuff. We out here, man. We are. We are out here, little by little, making waves. We are out here infiltrating every damn industry, every damn league, every everything, man, because we can do it all as as Latinos. We are, are proud and talented and gifted, and it's amazing to see. Also, this is like a, a whole topic of conversation with the WNBA. I talked about this on my Instagram, but you had a lot of people outraged when they started seeing what the rookie contract or like the salaries for these women would be especially caitlin clark going uh number one um a lot of people were like bro she's only making like i think it's like seventy five thousand dollars her rookie year a lot of people were outraged and then they compare it to like nba salaries which are obviously in the millions um and if you're upset about it just like we talked about kind of earlier in the show do something about it the I'm not I don't want to make this a negative thing, but I think what uh, these conversations that begin happening, people love to just fucking talk, and uh, and and it's like, yeah, do these women deserve more? One hundred and ten percent, they are gifted, they are professional athletes, they do deserve better, but you also have to do your part to support, because this is the other point. Like, we all can complain till the cows come home about lack of representation, lack of opportunity, all these different things, and. They are very real complaints. But we also have to look ourselves in the mirror and say, when one of us does get the opportunity, are we all truly running out there to support them to make sure that another person then gets the opportunity? Because that's the only way this works. So if you want to see the WNBA players getting the pay that they deserve, you have to start buying tickets to the games. You have to turn on the television and watch the games. Give them the ratings. You have to buy some jerseys, right? That is how the league begins to grow and then generate the income and revenue needed in order to be able to pay these women what they deserve. But they can't just be dumping millions of dollars into salary when they're not recouping it in any way, shape, or form. It is a business at the end of the day, right? And that's just like with entertainment and movies and, and television, yeah, there's a problem where our stories aren't being told or, or there traditionally has been. But we then have to do our part and support them when they are told. Give them the ratings. Go buy the movie ticket. Go go do whatever it is, right? Like it, go even even on a smaller scale. So many of us will will like be like, "Oh, I'm so proud of my friend. They're doing their thing." But you're never actually supporting them, right? We we have no problem. This I mean, this kind of deviates to a whole other thing, but like we have no problem supporting complete strangers and buying their clothing and buying their products. Meanwhile, the people we know who are, are aspirational and trying to build something else for their life, we're not rushing to support them in that same way. And again, I'm generalizing. I'm not saying any you know all of us are like that, but I think we all have to get a bit better, myself included, at not just talking the talk, but also walking the walk. What am I really doing to contribute to the change I want to see. Because complaining on social media, yes, conversation is needed. It's the start. But it means nothing if it's not followed by action. So if you are upset about something like the WNBA's you know, wage gap, do something to help the problem. Again, watch it on TV. Give it the ratings. Go to a game. Buy a jersey. All of this is us doing little things to contribute to fixing a problem, right? And it's easy. It's simple. It, I mean, it can't get much simpler than just turning on the fucking TV when a game is on, right? But unfortunately, we live in like this culture that complains and then never does anything about it. I mean, that's human nature in general. Many of us are kind of like that. We were like, oh, I hate my job. I hate my life, blah, blah, blah. And then that's as far as we get. And I'm sorry if this is like coming off as like, I feel like I'm like David Goggins just fucking calling people out right now. But I say this to myself, I'm saying it to myself as well. And I constantly have the voice in my head of like, you don't like what you see. You are envious of what somebody else has. What are you doing 
to correct that. It comes down to you. What what are you playing your part to fix this issue that you have deemed, you know, to be an issue without, you know, for the sake of sounding redundant. That's what we have to ask ourselves. It's great. Be outraged, be energized for a cause, but then follow it up with action. And and that's what we need more of in, in our lives and, and in society in general. If, you know, if you're really, if we really want to see change happen, we really want to see people get what they, they deserve, you know, um, we have to follow our outrage up with action and not just let it live and die on social media. That's my two cents. With that said, we had a positive show today. Love it. Love having a positive show. Let's uh, let's tie a, a neat little bow on all we talked about today, and we'll do it in a segment we call Conclusion Stew. Time for Conclusion Stew. Mm. All right, so to recap all we talked about today, you had that Selena story with the, the uh, boutique company who – came together the boutique lifestyle brand i should say who came together with uh the brujeria brewery company who also is poc owned and i want to make sure the lifestyle boutique called mi vida and they came up with this collaboration to honor selena in the form of a beer family wasn't having it again i think this is like a two-headed monster story i am beyond excited to see these type of collaborations i want to do collaborations like this one i actually would love to do a just be beer i'm a big beer fan I would love to do something like that. Putting that out there into the universe, Brenda, if you are listening, I need I need your uh, childlike energy in a good way. When I say that, your childlike energy that anything is possible, and I need you to um, help push my jaded ass to make this a, uh, make this collaboration possibly happen. Because I'm a big beer for person, and I think it'd be the coolest thing ever to have um, collaborate with a brand like this one who is POC owned and and doing amazing things. Um, so just love that. And also I just want to collaborate with more people. I love seeing collaboration. I love seeing us all come together and help build each other up. People who are doing cool shit from our community, building each other up. And if her family, listen, I get it. I'm not going to villainize them as just being money hungry. I'm sure there's a lot of trauma and triggers that come around anybody doing anything associated with her name. And I can only imagine the lack of control you feel like when the person you love is taken away from you and there was nothing you could do about it. You know, it was so out of your control. So I think it's normal that in, you know, uh, the years following, they're very protective about her name, brand, likeness, because it's the only thing they have now of her, basically, right? The only thing they have left, and it's the only thing they're actually in control of. So I get it. Uh, Farm Cella, love it again. I think, A, the message of honoring people, especially in today's climate, where you have anti-immigrant narrative, you have people talking down on the type of work that many migrant uh, uh, people end up doing when they come to this country. It's beautiful to see them propped up and celebrated. And also it's beautiful that a Latina just decided to take it upon herself to create something beautiful and, and uh, have an idea in her head and then actually bring it out into life. Second year in a row, just amazing to see actual Coachella. Listen, I don't think I, I personally want to be out in the desert at a festival you know, uh, all day long. But when I see this Latin representation happening at this festival and people are not only receptive to it, but coming out in, in big numbers, dude, it gets me so fucking excited. Like so excited. And obviously like I'm a music person as well. And I've existed not in the world of Coachella, but festivals like that where they are more pop culture festivals. Right. And, it's always frustrating me to, to, that we've been left at a lot of those conversations. So to see us operating at high levels, to see somebody like Jay Balvin bringing out somebody like Will Smith, you know, I think is incredible. Or to see Tyler Creator headlining and Kali Uchis is one of his guests is is just um, amazing. And, and obviously just everything, everything about it. I love it. And the WNBA, I love the fact that these are conversations like I, I've i never talked about the WNBA, uh, I think, a day in my life when it comes to content. And I love the fact that now it's become such a topic of conversation, women's basketball in general, that now I have no choice but to talk about it, right? Or but to be interested in it. Um, and not that I'm like, was ever against it, but I mean, it, what I'm saying is it's becomes a part of pop culture now that it's like naturally like, yeah, of course I'm going to talk about women's basketball in some sort of way or the WNBA. That's growth, that change. And if you want to see it really become what it deserves to be, we just have to continue to support it, talk about it, uh, go to games, watch games, buy the merch, all that kind of stuff. I think that is... Um, you know, very powerful to feel like we have power, you know, that sort of like 
power. I feel like I don't want to use that word too much. We have it in our hands. We just have to show up. All of us just have to take little actions, right? Just like Farm Chella. You, you have an idea, just do it. It, it. It's something that excites you. Just put it out there into the world and create it and do it. Um, and you're making this world a better place no matter how big or small the thing that you're doing is. Just by putting that positive energy out there into the world. Just amazing stuff. I'm fucking energized right now. I feel good. I'm going to go into like a creative cave and just go wild right now for the rest of the day. I am hyped the fuck up. So thank you all for giving me the platform to do so. Again, Just Be Social Club. We are opening up April 30th. If you want to be part of it, this is community. We are building it. Y'all are going to be the first ones to get in on the ground floor. We are literally building this together. I'm calling you out. Like, if you really believe in the power of our community, I don't, and I don't just mean like Just Be Community or Life as a Gringo community. I mean the power of us as Latinos, as people of color, as allies within all of that, as people who want more out of life. This is our opportunity to all come together in one place and collaborate and inspire one another on a consistent basis. This is a place for all of us to finally feel seen and heard often or for many of us, it might be for the first time in our lives. So that's what we are building with this Just Be Social Club. Again, I want it to be a hub for creativity, for collaboration, for inspiration, for motivation, for just people feeling at home. That's the goal of it. So April 30th, we are launching. You want to be on the waiting list so we can send you the link to launch. Uh, Email brenda at mindofayounglord.com. I'll put the link in the show notes. Or just DM me on Instagram. I'm going to be checking my my DMs um, and just reach out and let me know, hey, I want to be a part of it. Or just follow us at justbe.nyc. You could DM that as well. Um, Any of those things, we're going to be checking them, and we will add you to the list. Again, Like we're all building something, and I feel like this is going to be a really big thing for our community, but it takes all of us coming together. This isn't just about me. This isn't about uh, Brenda. This is literally only works if all of us are on the same page and have the same goal in mind of, of wanting to be around like-minded people and empower one another. Right. That's what it, I want this to be thousands of people together who you're like, Oh, I'm thinking about starting a business, but I don't have a, I don't know how to write a business plan. Boom. All of a sudden, you know, there's somebody in the community who's like, hey, I actually do that for a living. I help people write business plans. Let's let's connect. I'll coach you through it. How amazing would that be? I don't have to fucking Google. I don't have to be looking at strangers. I don't have to, you know, um, pay a random, you know, white person to, to do this. I can say, hey, oh, shit, there's actually somebody from my community who's doing this work. Let me support them at the end of the day, right? Let me let me use their services uh, because not only am I getting something I need, like graphic design or whatever it might be, but now I'm also empowering somebody from our community to continue living out their dream. We're all helping each other at the end of the day. That's what I'm trying to build with this whole Just Be Social Club. I'm really amped up about it, as you could tell. So, yeah, reach out in some sort of way. And we will add you to the list so you can be a part of it. Help us build this beautiful, beautiful thing that um, I just have in my head right now. With that said, thank you all so much for tuning in. Again, no shows next week. I'm going to be traveling. Um, Follow me at DJ Dramas. I'll be posting content a bunch. So if you want to get a peek into what it's like when I touch down in the uh, the motherland, I'll be posting about that. And if not, I'll just catch you when we bring the show back the following week, which will be the, uh, the week of the 29th. April is just about done, which is absolutely crazy. Um, Here we are, man. Love it. Love it. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I will catch you next time uh, in about a weekend. Yeah, about a week. Week and a half. Till then, stay safe. We'll talk soon. Peace.